Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we'll be reviewing the new Tundra because Toyota has just released some pretty solid discounts on this new Tundra, and so I think a lot of you might be interested with the new pricing in mind. Before we get into this video, I'm gonna give a huge shout out and link you to the Brent Brown Toyota here in Orem for giving me some time with this Tundra. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. I'll also include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. So first off, powering this particular Tundra is the standard iForce, so 3.4 liter twin turbo V6, goes through a 10 speed, 17 around town, 22 on the highway with MPG, 389 horsepower and then 479 pound feet of torque. Before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you need some more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you can see it's raised there on either side and guess what, Terra! now available on packages like this which is really cool really fun design there with the turn signal indicator notice that everything's blacked out in the grill including the Toyota badge now from the factory you got fog lights here at the bottom and yeah I really like this Terra color I think it's one of Toyota's best colors I've ever done now some other cool items you got the TRD wheels here with the TRD off-road package that this truck has and then the TRD off-road package also gives you Bilstein shocks, which you aren't really gonna be able to see too well. And then notice the fender flare is all blacked out, so it creates some nice contrast. Badges, mirror caps also do that. You can see the limited badge here on the side. Now this TRD off-road badge does look a little bit cheesy, but you know, I think with the overall profile of the truck, not too bad. And then this leads us to the key fob, so we can actually drop down the tailgate just with the press of a button. This one has the factory liner, so composite bed, but then you've got this to make it so that things don't slide all over the place. And then we do have power here as well, which is another nice setup. And yeah, you can see with the lights here, factory tonneau cover too. And then just like the Tacoma, you've got the auto raise with the tailgate. We also have the little kick step there at the bottom. So you can see that package wise, this particular truck, and this is why I picked this for the review. I think this one's really well set up. Now the only downside with the Tundra compared to some of the competition is going to be the back seat area. So if you get a hybrid, you don't get storage underneath. This one's not a hybrid, so you do get the storage. Uh, but it's just the space in general. So it's not cramped at all. It's still a spacious cabin. It's just not as big as its American counterparts when it comes to kind of like legroom, headroom. But it, again, it fits people more than adequately. Uh, but anyways, this one, you can see all the little charging ports down below. Got the cool design here on the seats with the limited package and so yeah again like i said a little bit of a smaller space but it's not bad at all and then this leads us inside up front really nice soft touch trim down below as well this is stuff that kind of holds it better over time and then of course you got stuff like blind spot monitoring uh payload on the tundras not too bad 1390 towing capacity is around 10,000 with these trucks and then you can see nice trim down the center and then you have a heated steering wheel, which is another nice feature. You get fancy pedals with this package too, which is pretty cool. Getting in the Tundra is easy. You've got a grab handle to help out as well. Now, we also have memory seats. And then the door does kind of... It's pretty solid. Full digital cage cluster is also a nice thing to have with the truck. And then I like this uh, steering wheel setup. I reviewed a Tacoma that had pretty high mileage uh, the other day. When I say high mileage, high mileage for the year, it had over 20,000 miles and it was 24. Um, but yeah, the steering wheel had, did show somewhere, but it seems like this new material holds up pretty well overall. Of course, got adaptive cruise control. Toyota has a really cool camera system as well, 360. We've got heated and cooled seats with this. We have a rear locking differential. And then we also have this fun tier D shifter. Got a two-speed transfer case. We've got a bunch of different equipment here. Uh, Multi-terrain select is great for off-road crawl control as well, and you got on-road drive modes. And then I do like Toyota's center console setup. It's not as good as Rams, but I would say it's the second best in the truck industry in terms of the practicality that it offers. And then you've got a nice soft touch there on the dash. We've got like a camera rear view mirror. The whole window in the back goes down. And then we've got a panoramic center. So you can see this thing is fully decked out. And now taking a look at the window sticker here again, 2025, this is how you get Terra on trucks outside of the TRD Pro. Uh, this one's pretty darn loaded up. So starting price is 57,000, but then once you add in premium package and you add the panoramic center and all that other stuff, you come to a total MSRP of 68,269. So quick note, 
other truck makers in this basically equipment segment, if that makes sense, are going to be mid to high 70s. So this is already priced at lower than the competition for the equipment that it has. And then you take into account that Toyota right now, again, rebates change every single month, but you know, they've got about $2,000 of rebate from what I see. And then dealers are also discounting these as well. You could get this in the mid to low 60s after the discounts. And so that puts this quite a bit below what you're going to see with the other manufacturers. I mean, like the other manufacturers literally have to discount their trucks like almost 10 grand just to get to this MSRP. And then the discounts on top of it. And the Tundra is looking like a really good value. Well, let us set off in this Tierty Off-Road Limited to cap things off with our talk about Tundra pricing. And I mean, right, everyone knows about the Tundra situation and everyone knows that Toyota dealers basically have two cars in inventory. <laughs> I should say trucks. They've got, I mean, there's some other stuff, but basically Tacomas and Tundras and mostly uh, Tundras. And you know, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this because everyone already knows about it. The whole recall of 100,000 vehicles because of the machining fragments left in engines, engines going kapow, especially with the non-hybrids. Has happened to some hybrids, but mostly non-hybrids. And that's actually something that I think should be important to note. Um, I, I still think that there would be some Tundras in the lot, even if that wasn't an issue, because there is another situation that I think is... Uh, going against not just the Tundra, but just other trucks in general right now. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a big thing. But it's one of those things where, you know, there's big discounts now, so you can kind of take advantage of the fact that the Tundras aren't so hot. There, there's always there's always two sides, right? There's people that want to buy the hot vehicles because then the values are going to hold better and they're hard to get. And so it's like, it's kind of like this status symbol because you got one. But then on the flip side, the vehicles that people aren't as interested in, well, there's bigger discounts on them. And because there's bigger discounts on them, then, well, you get to get more vehicle for less money. Again, this is already in the in the full-size pickup truck world, a lot less than the competition. And then you, you add the discounts onto it and it's, it's a whole lot less. Like, I think about like, if you wanted a Ford with heated and cooled seats, panoramic sunroof. You can't even get the camera rear view mirror. So I guess let's, let's go to Ram. Ram, you can get all the equipment that this has pretty much. And so yeah, Laramie with that. And you're like, oh, you're pretty much 80 grand. You're pretty much 80 grand at that point. And so the pricing that this is selling at, you'd literally have to discount that Ram like almost $20,000 off of MSRP just to be the same price. So Tundra, I like how it drives the new Tundra. It's a lot better than the previous gen in terms of the comfort and the acceleration. This engine has tons of low end torque and because they pipe in the audio, it actually sounds pretty good. If you turn off the piped in audio, it sounds like nothing. <laughs> Pro tip there. But yeah, it's, it's just a truck that drives well. And I like this color. I think this color looks great. And so to finalize this review, full-size pickup trucks are really struggling right now because they're just too darn expensive overall the full-size pickup truck market went mentally insane over the last couple of years and the thing that automakers are doing right now is they are just basically holding their prices right they increase the prices a bunch and instead of you know correcting right we do have rebates and discounts on vehicles like this but msrps aren't coming down and for some cars, right, it's fine because the price increases were modest or the demand in those segments is high enough. They're hot, you know, the cars are hot enough that people are willing to pay some of the elevated prices. But the full-size pickup truck market, that's just never really been the case with this market outside of specialty product like TRD Pro, like Raptor. And so what you see is the demographic that's going to buy this can't afford it. Even with the discounts that this Tundra has, right, putting in that $60,000 range, it's still out of reach for, again, the average person that would buy this. I, I worked at a truck dealership, so I know exactly the demographic, right? It, it's your average American. So most people going and <laughs> buy, right? The average person in America makes like, I think households like 70 something thousand dollars. But then if you look at individual, which is uh, I think a more important figure to look at, right? How much are people making? Then it's in that like $50,000 range. 
So if someone's, if the average person's making about 50 grand a year, you know, maybe some people are making 60, 70 grand a year because they've got a, you know, better job. And, you know, maybe some people are making six figures. Asking them to spend their entire year, year's salary or a little bit less than their year's salary on a vehicle, it's, that's, that's a lot, right? Because people got other expenses. So the point that I'm trying to make is this is not attracting uh, pickup trucks do not you know they have some higher income people that buy them but in general pickup trucks don't attract the higher income demographic pickup trucks attract the average person and the average person can't afford to spend oh, i can't park there there's dirt the average person can't afford to spend the amount of money that just full-size pickup trucks cost i think that the pricing before the pandemic was right at the limit and this is just my personal opinion and based off what i saw i think it was right at the limit of what people could reasonably make happen and what pricing looked like back then if we if we took today's vehicles and packages and even if we adjust for inflation i mean i'll kind of think in mental math here so just at for inflation that means that like an sr5 back then would have probably you know reasonably should have been in the 30 so today Okay, so $40,000 for like an SR5, somewhere around there. And then a limited like this should be about $55,000, somewhere in that range. And I know some people might think this sounds like crazy. Like, that's, that's a huge, it is a big difference. But I, I think that, yeah, if we, if we had adjust for everything and kind of look at it from that perspective, then you can see just the whole full-size pickup truck market. But let me know your thoughts.